ICANN Meeting 42 has just concluded here in Dakar, Senegal. We're here with Rod Beckstrom, President and CEO of ICANN, and Steve Crocker, Chair of the ICANN Board, who have agreed to answer a few questions for us. Rod, let's start with you. It's roughly about two months before the new GTLD application window opens. Is ICANN ready? We are ready, uh, and we've got a uh, operating process we've set up to to handle them in batches anyway. So we're ready to handle whatever number of applications comes. It'll just be a question of how much time it takes to process them. Steve, does the Governmental Advisory Committee's so-called early warning system mean in a de facto sense that the governmental representatives will have veto power over new GTLDs? What it means is that they will get um, uh, solid, uh, straightforward list of the strings being applied for, have an opportunity to comment on them, uh, raise any issues, and make sure that they're heard. It's not a veto power, but it is a high quality channel so that we have no miscommunication. Rod, based upon questions asked by some of the Governmental Advisory Committee members, there appears to be some concern over the practice of so-called batching. Can you explain what that is, and is there a cause for concern for ICANN here? Sure. We can receive any number of applications in the window, the application window, but we're only going to process them in batches of 500. So we have to decide how we're going to order those applications that come in in those batches. Uh, and there's a complex set of uh, legal and technical issues involved, and we're, we're, we're going to come up with a solution pretty shortly and announce that. So the GAC had some questions about that, and the other thing they were in interested in was whether their early warning was going to be done in separate batches of 500 each, or whether they'd be asked to provide comment on all of the applications when we publish the uh, list of strings in May. Steve, what did the board do about trying to assist potential new GTLD applicants from emerging economies, developing countries, those in need of assistance? Well, you may recall that uh, we previously allocated a fund of $2 million uh, to be put forth to assist applicants. We didn't put uh, precise specifications on how that would be used. Um, we, uh, this time, they were the Joint Applicant Support, so-called JAZZ Working Group, submitted a very thoughtful and very um, heartfelt report uh, with a whole list of recommendations. Uh, the board received that report and is committed to putting something sensible in place that meets the twin conditions of being responsive to that community and at the same time fits into the, what's practical to do in the program. So does that mean you're, the board is endorsing the recommendations of the report or you're trying to figure out how to implement the major themes that run through the report? It's closer to the latter. Uh, we want to be a bit careful because um, the group that put that together did not have all of the business uh, issues and business process issues at hand, weren't part of the of Rod's team and, and all of his uh, employees. So uh, we, we definitely take the themes, we definitely take the intent, and now we want to find out what's the best way to get to uh, as close as we can to that idea uh, and, and still not uh, break things. Let me ask both you gentlemen, this was a subject of a lot of conversation, not only at this meeting, but in the last meeting of Singa at Singapore. Why is this so important to ICANN? I think it's part of broadening out who we are and what we do, and there's a recognition that we just want a lot more participation from emerging markets, uh, emerging countries around the world, and developing countries are really important. And it's wonderful to have events like we have here in Africa, but we want to see them fully participating in this program. It's common, uh, commonly said, you know, there's two billion users on the internet. Uh, that's not evenly distributed, and uh, there's quite a lot of attention, not just within ICANN, but broadly around the world of how to increase that participation in the developing countries. Uh, and so I, I would view this as our part of how to participate in that general thrust. Why is this pr so important, this particular subject matter, and how important is it to those potential applicants that may exist here in the African continent, for example? Sure. Well, as you know, we have a slogan called One World, One Internet. And that means we want to keep the internet open and unified globally. 
And that means we really want people from all over the world to benefit from this unified domain name system. And so we want to see applicants uh, from developing countries as well as from others. And it's important to them to feel included. So it has a, a great psychic benefit and uh, political benefit for participants around the world to feel like they're going to get a hand to participate in this program. Extending the internet and increasing the participation in the um, developing countries is a major theme for uh, the next period of time. It will take quite a while. And uh, program that we're rolling out, new GTLDs, is a is, is sort of our contribution to how to extend the reach. One element of the new GTLD program will be uh, so-called internationalized domain names (IDNs), and uh, that will make the internet uh, accessible, uh, help make it accessible to a large number of people who don't speak English or any of the Western languages as their as their native language. Everyone in the world counts. And as Steve mentioned, there's two billion users of the internet in the world, but there's many more of those in the developing world than in the, develop than in the developing world. And that's beginning to shift. And we want to do anything we can to help make sure that the domain name services and, and choices and opportunities are available all over the world. So that, because everyone, everyone matters. It should be defined by inclusivity. Yes, exactly. Steve, one of the controversies that has arisen over the past few weeks is conflicts of interest or perceived conflicts of interest with current or former board members. What is the board doing to deal with those concerns? Well, we have uh, always had very tight conflict of interest uh, policies. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it's been opportune to take a close look um, at the policies, at our ethics policies, to see if there's areas that can be expanded or pieces that can be filled in. And then equally, to look at our practices that follow those policies and to um, sharpen those. Um, at the board level, we go through an inordinate amount of uh, testing um, about conflicts on, in given situations where a particular board member uh, is, has business relationships that might be perceived to be related to something we're currently voting on. We're in the process of tightening things up even more and drawing a kind of wider, fatter line around so that uh, there's just no issues. Rod, what's ICANN doing at a staff level to deal with these same types of concerns? You know, we, there's continuous education that we do, and there's a lot of tightening that we've been doing since I mentioned this issue in June in my speech in Singapore that I thought that launching the new GTLD program with the economic power behind that was going to put new pressures on the board and on the staff. Uh, we started tightening up internally. So it's about education and it's about drawing new lines, such as at this event we educated our staff that they were not to accept a free meal or a free, free drink from anyone in the industry that might be a potential applicant for the program. And some people consider that draconian and I thought it was pretty clear and concrete and it was, I was really pleased that so many people this event called uh, talked about how you can't even give an employee a Coke. And that's right. <laughs> so I'm glad that the uh, concept stuck. But it goes farther than that. We also decided that we would not have any staff members participate in the new GTLD uh, uh, roadshow if they were involved in processing applications. Uh, we also decided that uh, staff members should report any contact with potential applicants for new GTLDs who were talking to them and asking questions about it so that we have a really clear documentation trail just to show how fair we're, we are in processing these applications and how independent it is because we do have an important role uh, in a quasi-regulatory manner in some ways and we've got to be absolutely fair, absolutely objective and extremely clean in everything that we do. And I think we've got a, a long way to go to keep educating and improving our practices, both on the board and on the staff. You seem to be saying objectivity is not simply important. In fact, it has to be perceived broadly. You, we've got to change behavior. So, I mean, because if you, because as I mentioned in Singapore, we're moving from having crafted the program and in crafting the policies and the guidelines, there was heavy interaction between the board, the staff, and the community. Now we're moving to a phase where we're in the program execution and that contact between the board and applicants and between staff and, and applicants has to change because the applications have got to be treated so independently and so fairly 
because some of these new GTLDs could be worth many millions of dollars and we can't have situations where those applicants are lobbying board members or lobbying staff members seeking to gain benefits for themselves. Steve, there's been some questions raised as to whether the internet root zone can handle the influx of new TLDs. Well, I wouldn't want to say it's a, uh, not a valid concern, but it's for those of us who actually understand the dynamics and the, how the root zone works, uh, it, it really is not a concern at all. The root zone is a very, very small. Uh, when we're talking about expanding it, it's still going to be quite small. Uh, compared to all of the other zones that are common across the Internet, the root zone is a tiny, tiny a fraction of uh, what any of the major uh, top-level domains are, for example. So from a technology point of view, expanding the root zone is, is a really a very minor matter. What are the biggest things that came out of this particular meeting in Dakar? So certainly one of the primary uh, and most interesting uh, aspects was the focus on Africa. Uh, we had the African Regional At-Large Organization, had a summit, had a showcase, had many people from around the region uh, participating. We also had uh, interest and participation from the government level. We had an African ministerial meeting three days leading into the ICANN meeting and on the same location. Um, and it was very focused on uh, not only general ICT and not only general internet issues, but also uh, focused very much on what ICANN could do that would be helpful in this region. The African uh, minister, ministers put together a communique with 12 very specific requests uh, that uh, showed a lot of uh, knowledge. Uh, they, weren't, uh, they weren't superficial, they were very pointed, and it's a, it was a pretty interesting engagement, so we're quite interested in that. Uh, so that's one whole focus, and uh, a number of other things that were maybe less visible uh, along the same lines that I think we learned an awful lot about what this region could use and would find helpful. Um, then the other themes, of course, uh, were the, uh, the interest in the conflict of interest, as you say. Um, there is considerable interest in the process that we've set in motion to look for uh, uh, the very daunting task of looking for a successor for Rod Beckstrom here. Um, and um, uh, the uh, other things related to the GTLD uh, launch process, including, of course, uh, support for uh, applicants from developing areas. Rod, let me put the same question to you. What will people remember about ICANN 42? A number of things. I mean, as Steve mentioned, the ministerial was fantastic, and I think the communique that was delivered by the ministers to ICANN, very constructive. I think people are going to remember the president's speech. Uh, this was the first time a head of state spoke to ICANN and went so in-depth on the policy issues of the domain name system. He was clearly very well briefed and interested and animated in the issues because he's got an interest in the internet. So I think that was a highlight, plus just the, the beauty of Senegal, the physical beauty of the coastline here, the people, the music, uh, the great events. It's just, it was just a fabulous, fabulous experience. And our, and our first event ever, by the way, in French Sub-Saharan Africa. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.